Greetings! This tutorial is going to cover some of the advanced features and things you probably didn't know that UDoodle could do. There's lots of hidden stuff in UDoodle, so please watch all of this video. You'll learn something new, I hope, and let's dive right in. So, you'll first notice that there's this little gear icon in the top left. There's a lot of settings here that may be confusing, so I'm going to cover the most confusing ones that a lot of people don't understand. The first one is adjust brush size when zooming. So let's take a look at an example. I've got this smiley face here with a certain brush size and as I zoom in my brush size stays the same. Well some people want to make really tiny lines like really like maybe one pixel or less. And the way to do that is to turn on adjust brush size when zooming. Now as I zoom in you can see my brush size will remain the same size on the screen. So it's still the same width. If I zoom in again it's still the same width. And I can zoom in even more it's still the same width. You can see it's starting to get a little bit blurry there. It's because it's basically one pixel wide. If I go to the smallest size, it's tiny. That's as small as you can get. Now, you'll, if I zoom all the way back out, you'll notice you can hardly see that. So I made a very small strokes there by enabling the adjust brush size with zoom option. Another useful combining tool with that is the smooth edge option here at the bottom. If I turn that off, and then go ahead and zoom all the way back in, you can get an even finer, more sharp line. You'll notice there's almost no blur on that line because it's basically one pixel. Okay, so that's great. So that's how you make really tiny lines or keep your brush size to a relative size on the screen. So basically as you zoom in, you can kind of gauge how big your stroke is going to be by how big that circle is. It's always going to be as big as the circle was regardless of how much you're zoomed in or out. Okay, I hope that made sense, but I'm going to move on to another setting here. I'm going to turn that off so I don't get confused more. Allow zooming out more. Right now you'll notice if I pinch and zoom I can get my image smaller than the screen. So there's kind of this canvasy area behind it that it doesn't really do anything, but it's nice if you need to get the edges of your image, like doing some drawing. Whoops, let me make my brush size bigger. So if I want to hit those edges here, it's kind of hard to do that if your image is mashed right up against the side of the device. But if you don't need to worry about that, you can turn off that option, which kind of fits your image to the screen more or less with just a tiny bit of padding and then as you pinch in it doesn't get any smaller so it's useful if you want to make sure your image is always about the same size as the screen. You can still kind of get some good edge work in here but for those of you who want to get the image a lot smaller and have fat fingers it's nice to turn this option on which then lets you get smaller. Okay let's move on. The show confirmation dialogs is useful because it warns you generally when you're about to do a change that's going to kind of change your image permanently. For example, if I want to merge this to the background, for example, that kind of changes my image permanently, but it says, hey, do you want to do this? You can cancel out of that. If you decide you're an advanced user and you like to move fast and you don't like being nagged by pop-ups, Turn that off, and now when you say merge to background, it just does it for you without asking. So if you're advanced and like to move fast, you can turn that off. I like to leave it on, though. Okay, swipe up from bottom toolbar to show draw tools. That's useful if you don't like to take your eyes away from your image. You can just touch the very bottom of your phone and swipe up, and that'll bring up the draw tools, which is very handy. Now if you don't like that, you can turn that option off and then as you swipe up it doesn't bring up the draw tools. I like to leave it on because that's very handy if you don't want to take your eyes off your image. 
Okay, the hide status bar was something I recently added that a lot of people wanted to have because they wanted to glance at the time in case they were sucked into UDoodle for 10 hours and they wanted to know if it was bedtime. So if you uncheck hide status bar, you'll notice at the top now that my status bar is showing up and you can kind of see the current time. I like to leave it off because every pixel counts, especially on a phone. So we'll keep the status bar off. The show image info when zooming is only for iPhones and iPods. You'll notice if I zoom in and out here, you get this kind of percentage label at the top that tells you your dimensions and your zoom percentage. If that really annoys you, go ahead, turn that off. And now as you zoom, you don't get that black bar at the top. I generally like to leave it on so I can tell how far I'm zoomed in and, and get an easy reminder of my pixel dimensions, but it's up to you what you want to do with that. Okay, so you'll see this you doodle text right at the top in the middle. This is a great way to remind yourself that you're using the greatest app ever, you doodle, but it's also a nice target to double tap, which will hide the toolbar and the navigation bar at the top here. So if you double tap the you doodle there, all of those go away and you have a completely full canvas, which is very useful on the iPhone. This is the option to toggle it back to the way it was. You can get that out of the way if you need to draw somewhere. But this is great if you're like presenting your drawing with AirPlay or you just want a little extra room on a smaller iPhone. And then you just tap that guy to get your toolbars back. If you want to check for updates, please tap that you doodle icon a lot. You can read all of my great updates that I'm doing. Make sure to follow on Instagram and Facebook, of course. And there's some additional tricks with the draw tool that I'll go over, and I think that'll probably call it good for this tutorial. And the, this is the blend mode. So the blend mode, normally you should leave it on normal unless you're an advanced user. If you know what you're doing, changing this from normal to other modes will get you some interesting effects if you've used Photoshop or other photo editors that allow you to do some interesting blending options. This is one way to do that. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the multiply mode really fast. As you draw it kind of... Well, that didn't change things too much, probably because I now need to have a different color. Anyway, multiply multiplies the color by the color underneath it, so basically if you're transparent, it's not going to change anything. But let's try some other ones, like darken. So there we go. As you draw, it kind of makes a darker green underneath you, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, I even I'm not an expert with these blend modes. If you want to learn more about them, go do an online search on blend modes, and it'll tell you about what all of them do. So if you're an advanced artist, the best way to learn about these is just search online. Because like I said, I'm, I added it because people had asked to be able to change blend modes, but I'm pretty clueless, as you can tell. So anyway, I think that's about all the tips and tricks that I want to go over. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.